Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me start with, with acknowledgements. I would like to thank uh, the organizers for, for the possibility to, to take part into this event uh, as a speaker. Uh, Multikino is a perfect venue for a, for a conference. Uh, the experience uh, uh, is really great. So thank you very much. Uh, the title of my, uh, of my presentation is Intelligent Test Selection. Um, this is a general uh, approach to uh, optimize a QA process uh, in a company. And I am, together with my partners, we are building a product that, uh, uh, that uh, will utilize this strategy uh, as a commercial product. Uh, if I was to say about myself uh, a few words, uh, the most important thing is that now I lead the startup that we call ICA Technologies, and this is the platform that I mentioned before, uh, the intelligent test selector that we want to commercialize. You may have uh, read some of my books. I pu published two books in the United States and uh, some 15 books in Poland with Helion. Uh, they are introductory textbooks about various, uh, various topics uh, concerning web application development and programming. The agenda for, uh, for my speech uh, is following. Uh, I will start with, uh, uh, with the introduction to end-to-end -end testing to define what we are talking about, what do we want to optimize. Uh, I will use the example application geography that we, uh, that we use uh, as a presentation for, for describing the idea we have in mind. Uh, then we will st state the problem what led us to the idea of creating, uh, creating the product to apply intelligence, intelligent test selection. Uh, then we will uh, proceed with uh, the description what the intelli intelligent test selection may be and how to use AI uh, and machine learning methods uh, to resolve the problems uh, that we face with QA process. Finally, I will mention what, what we can gain uh, using this strategy and um, I will try to answer the questions that you may have. The end-to-end um, -end testing uh, for, for the purpose of this, of this presentation, the end-to-end -end testing uh, will, be the, uh, will consist of three uh, components. Uh, we need automated test suite, uh, we need the project that we want to test, and finally we need some environment where we can run the complete application. Uh, These three uh, components allow us to run the set of tests that verify the quality of the application as a whole. Uh, important aspects of of end-to-end uh, -end tests uh, to take into consideration are the independence. Uh, can we uh, run arbitrary tests of the suit uh, in isolation? Can we run them in arbitrary order? Uh, this is very important because uh, very often it happens that uh, the test suite is supposed to be, uh, to be used in a certain uh, sequence. So this is, a, it may be a stumbling block, a block to, uh, to apply the strategy called intelligent test selection. Uh, another problem that we may encounter is stability of tests. So I am assuming that the tests we are executing are pretty stable 
which means they do not fail randomly uh, because of uh, external problems, external in, in a sense, external to the application. Uh, the next aspect is resources necessary to run the complete test suite. Uh, those resources, uh, which, which are time or com computing power, uh, we need a case where those resources are not trivial. Uh, in other words, if the complete regression takes uh, uh, one minute, there is no point in, in uh, performing any test selection as we can always run the complete uh, test set. And finally, uh, the test suite needs to be in a, in a green state when we start to apply the strategy. Uh, so the starting point should be the point where the application is correct. The perfect system for, for intelligent test selection thus consists of a lot of automated tests that are independent and stable uh, where end-to-end -end regression is green and requires a lot of time to run. So these assumptions may be too severe in many cases, uh, which can cause problems in applying the, the strategy of test selection. Uh, the headaches uh, related to end-to-end uh, -end regression and test automation uh, consist of um, the, the list of possible headaches is very long and uh, here are the t typical examples that you may have encountered. For example, the pyram pyramid of tests is improper. Uh, it is uh, very often easier to add new end-to-end -end tests than to refactor the test to, uh, to create the better test suite. Uh, using all combinations for input data is another uh, headache that bothers uh, uh, automated end-to-end -end regression. And also test instabilities and never-ending queue of CI jobs. Let's proceed with the example application that we, that we use as the, as the uh, explanation for the strategy we have in mind. So the application consists of, uh, of, uh, four, uh, of four crude uh, modules. Uh, we call it geography. We collect data about cities, rivers and uh, mountains. Uh, we have the forms to add, uh, update and delete records in the application. So the application is a very simple one, just to get the core of the concept. It's written as the REST API together with a front-end and uh, underlying database. And we use Vagrant or, or Docker, uh, two possible solutions to run the complete environment, uh, the complete application. So, uh, in order to start the application, we just uh, boot Vagrant virtual machine or Docker containers. Automated tests are written in Gherkin language for the REST API uh, or Cypress for the front-end. So we have two different test suits, one for the API, one for the front-end. The example test uh, written in Gherkin uh, sends the appropriate uh, a request to the API and verifies the answers, while tests in Cypress uh, use the 
uh, for HTML forms to send the data and uh, verify the contents of the, of the uh, user interface. The, the regression we, we for, for running the regression we use, uh, we use the same set of shell scripts in both cases. And now let's dive into the problem that we want to address. So the first, the first thing that we uh, encountered in the companies that we worked, me and my partners, is uh, that a lot of resources uh, are required to run the regression. Uh, so in some of our clients, the regression takes as much as six hours uh, to finish. Uh, so, for example, running it in the cloud uh, will generate a cost. Uh, the second problem with the regression that runs many hours is that it is not possible to, uh, to perform regression with within a time slot that is much uh, shorter, for example, lasts for one hour. So some of our clients have the agreement where they are obliged to, uh, to patch the production in less than one hour, uh, which means that after creating the hotfix, they are not able to verify the complete system. They, uh, they must select uh, the subset of tests they use to verify the patch. Uh, another problem is that uh, BDD approach uh, is very complicated, if possible at all, uh, with the regression that lasts so many hours. Uh, usually the regression runs nightly, which means the developer can uh, get the answer uh, about the quality of his code, how it uh, impacts the application uh, the next day, which makes the BDD approach uh, impossible. Uh, next problem is uh, the uh, queue of builds on uh, CI server, uh, which very often becomes uh, a very long one, which makes, uh, first of all, uh, forces developers to wait for the result uh, of the uh, verification. And very often when something breaks in CI pipeline, uh, they have to start a fresh rebuild and the, the whole uh, pipeline of their work is uh, is not convenient. So the shorter the build on CI ser server, the, uh, the smoother the things would go. And uh, what more? Uh, if we uh, release the code with a bug to the next uh, stage uh, within our process in the company, so, for example, to production or uh, even to, to the uh, tests that are executed nightly, then uh, this bug has much greater impact on the whole company as it would have uh, in a case where it was caught by the developer uh, himself. Uh, so, we are also trying to reduce the number of bugs that are uh, that uh, are released by a developer. And now uh, let's, uh, let's dive into intelligent test selection. So how can we define intelligent test selection? Given the project and the test uh, and the changes in the project, uh, what tests are uh, possibly impacted by a given set of changes. So we want to find the subset of tests 
that is necessary for a given feature branch or, or fix branch. The idea is to uh, reduce the overall time necessary to uh, verify the work that is done by a number of developers in their feature branches. At the upper image, we have a typical flow where each uh, feature branch runs a complete CI pipeline with complete set of tests. Uh, if the run takes something like three hours, then the complete time necessary to verify three branches is, is three times uh, larger. If we apply intelligent test selection, then in each feature branch we only, run, we only need to run the, the, the small fraction of all the tests, uh, only the tests that are possibly uh, in uh, somehow impacted by the changes. Uh, this gives us uh, one full run for a couple of developers, in three in this case, and three times reduced, uh, reduced uh, test suite run. So the effort necessary to verify three feature branches which would be much less uh, if we were uh, to use intelligent test selection. The observation is very simple. Uh, the, there is a lot of redundancy in, in uh, regression testing the applied for feature branches. So if the system was green and we create a feature branch, then in large system we only, we only modify a small a fraction of a complete application, something like 1% or, or less, in which case uh, there is no need to run a lot of tests that are included in a complete uh, test run. We only need to run those tests that can possibly detect the bugs in, uh, in our uh, feature branch. Mm, intelligent test selection man may be seen as the uh, method to uh, select tests by uh, giving them priorities. So we do not say which tests uh, should be executed and which shouldn't. We instead we assign uh, we assign some weight, uh, let's say probability that they fail for given changes. And after the probabilities are assigned we need to sort them uh, uh, in descending order and then we can use a threshold to select only those that, that have the prob probability of failure higher uh, than a given level or we may use a constant time slot, for example 10 minutes to run them. And uh, both solutions would give us uh, the uh, most risky tests for given changes. And uh, of course, if we are able to digitalize manual regression, then the same strategy uh, can be applied to manual regression testing. Uh, let's now proceed with with artificial intelligence and machine learning. I strongly believe that using, uh, using artificial intelligence we can easily select the tests that are possibly affected by, by the changes uh, in certain areas of the application. So I, I think it is possible. Right now we already know that it is possible. Uh, because we, we, we found the solution already. Uh, 
what we are waiting for, uh, so the, the highest level of optimization. Uh, if, if we take into account two states, uh, green and red, uh, we can say that if after given changes the application is in red state, then we need just one test that would, uh, that would uh, confirm that. In case of a, a green state, then uh, we do not uh, have to to run any tests at all, at all, we just need the information that the system is green. So, uh, if we push the strategy to the limit, we may reduce it to running just one test. And method of sp methods of prediction. Uh, two first methods uh, are already widely used, they are manual, uh, so using tags and directory structure uh, we, can, uh, we can select the tests for a given uh, areas in the application, so combining our knowledge about the application and the structure of the tests and uh, tags, we can, uh, we can select the tests that we uh, consider appropriate. So that would be a manual, a manual uh, process, which can also uh, be automated. And then uh, a thing that we called failed tests map. Uh, the idea here is that using the history of runs, we may map uh, test files to the source code. And using those data for uh, neural networks, we are later able to predict which tests can possibly fail for a given changes. This is the very st uh, basic strategy that we have already applied and it gives enormous, enormous uh, savings, much more than 90%. Uh, next, uh, if, uh, and the first strategy which uh, failed tests map does not require us uh, to know anything about the application. We do not need the access to the source code uh, as the only knowledge we need is uh, which files were changed and uh, which tests failed. The next, uh, the next method which, fails, uh, which files are committed together uh, adds the knowledge to the prev previous solution um, combines the files into batches uh, that uh, on, on the basis for this strategy is the observation that the files committed together can uh, can um, mm, constitute the same module, the same the same uh, fragment of the application. The next uh, strategy is the static analysis of the application, so we can verify the dependencies of classes, for example, uh, using tools like jdepend or P phpdepend, so building the structure of dependencies uh, will en would enrich the our abilities to to select the tests for uh, for files for which we do not have any mapping yet, and we can also use uh, stack trace analysis and personalization, uh, which means we can assign uh, the knowledge based on the uh, on the information about the author. Uh, of the code. What profits, what are the profits of the strategy uh, of, of selecting the tests? Uh, so first of all, the same strategy may be used regardless of the uh, technology. Uh, so no matter what is the language of the application, what is the framework, uh, we can apply the same technique for selecting the tests. 
uh, of course all other techniques of improving the uh, the overall QA process may be applied as well. So, so the strategy of selection does not forbid or exclude uh, refactorization of tests or any other approach that you may find interesting. Uh, as I mentioned, the first strategy that, that, we, uh, that we implemented with success, uh, failed test maps, uh, saves more than 90% of, of time necessary for regression. And using the strategy uh, of test selection, uh, we are able to apply BDD approach, uh, BDD approach uh, in, the, uh, in the process of software development. That that would be all. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe you have some questions. Okay, just a second. <coughs> okay, let's switch to Slido to see uh, what uh, what questions do we do we got. Okay, so we'll go from the top. <coughs> the most voted question from Wojciech: How to manage around eight or nine thousand of test cases inherited from many previous years? Any clues how to handle such big scope of component tests? Uh, well, looks like perfect case for us. So the bigger, the better, because uh, uh, the greater the greater test suits it means that we would save much more uh, resources for you. Uh, currently, uh, the number of test cases is not that important as the structure uh, of, the, of the project for us and the structure of test cases. So the questions like how many how many Git repositories, what is their relations, how do they depend on each other, uh, those questions are, uh, are crucial because uh, uh, I think, well I cannot uh, say you for sure because uh, I, I did not uh, make any experiments, but the uh, dimensions of array arrays used for machine learning would not would not matter much but of course the learning process requires much more data so the question would be rather do we have access to the historical data or not if we don't have any historical data then uh, to create the data set uh, for the neural network to to learn would require much more time. Uh, the longer the test suit, the, the longer the process to acquire the data. Okay, and the next question. The question from David, can intelligent test selection be applied to regression cycles that last two weeks and it's hard to predict code changes since hundreds of coders are involved? Yes, that, that's, that looks like the problem for, for test selection for me. Exactly, but you, you, uh, you use the much longer time than six hours. So it means that you cannot run the regression uh, faster than twice a month, if I understand this correctly. So uh, using test selection, you would be able to run the tests for, give, uh, for a single uh, tester, assuming that you are able to deliver environment where only the changes from this tester are applied. This may be a real headache. It may be impossible in the large application. Yeah, but if we have environment with the changes from one tester, then and we have historical data, then we can train the network and run the uh, selection for this person. That's the basic idea. 
but we did not implement this uh, solution in such a big project. So I am saying only the theory, what we plan to do. The projects that we were, uh, that, that we were successful to apply uh, the technique are much smaller. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and uh, I think there are a few more, so we still have a time for them. Robert ask, uh, asks, what about Murphy's Law? Sometimes uh, something yeah. breaks in place never touched by a comet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so this uh, will cause problems. Yeah? But uh, on the other hand, uh, you will get a tool that is able to give you some information. Where are the tests that are unstable? without any reason. Okay, so this, this tool may lead you to a way to predict which tests are not reliable. Yeah? So I would reverse it. Yeah? Okay, and before we go to the next question, I'd like to tell you that this time we had the uh, books for the free Top, top three questions, so after the lecture, please go here and grab your books, the, all the three questions, for, uh, or the three people who ask the questions from the top three. And let's go to the next one. Maybe one, maybe one comment. Yeah. The, the intelligent test selection was uh, applied by Facebook for the complete pipeline. So it is possible for a very large project. Uh, it gave them uh, fantastic results, but it may be difficult to implement. Yeah. Okay, and the question from Alex, what kind of data set do you feed to your AI to do that, this intelligent selection? We are using layers. So the first layer uh, is the map of fails. So we have changes uh, in, uh, in the source code, uh, file names and zero one changed, not touched, okay, and we have tests that have zero one positive negative. This is the basic data set used for uh, for a map of source code to to test fails, and the results are really amazing. Uh, Next step, so this is the very basic step we have in mind for clients that uh, are not willing to reveal any information about, about their source code. Okay, so you, all we need is a, a file name or a hash of the fi file name and 0 or 1. Okay, so the next level we need to take a look into your code. Uh, so dependencies uh, using jdepend or php depend we are building the uh, tree like structures and we are using this information to uh, include in a neural network instead of zero and one like we had previously touched and not not touched we introduce uh, a number between zero and one let's say uh, zero point three Okay, for the files that are in close relation to the changed files. Okay. And the next level, level three, is the commit length, uh, which is the, uh, the files that are committed together also uh, receive the weight that is not zero in our map. So we have one, it was changed, we have uh, say 0 0.3, uh, there are dependencies. Uh, we have 0 0.1, it was committed very often uh, together with changed files, uh, and we have 0, uh, no information whatsoever. So we are trying to enrich the method of prediction with uh, new information, but for this prediction, for, for this kind of prediction, we need the access to the source code, which can be problematic for some clients. Okay, and I believe there is one final question. 
question from Bartosz Hajduk. Is it okay to not add to regression suite a, a test that has uh, that was useful during development if we think it will not bring any value later? Hard question. Hard question. Yeah. Well, you. Huh. It means that 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 you want a want to have a collection of tests that are tagged. Do not run me. It looks like this for me. This case. Yeah. So. So. The tests that I'm using while debugging, and do not uh, consider them uh, as uh, as a regression test suite, are my private. I would not send them to the to the product or to the tests repository. Okay? But I think it depends on on you, on your team. How how do you feel about it? Okay, thank you. Let's uh, thank, thank you. the Vladimir Gaida with a big applause. I think he deserves it. Thank you very much.